Ja, vi gör väl så att vi börjar. Och jag säger välkomna till er som sitter i lokalen och så säger jag välkomna till er som är på nätet. Vi tror med hänsyn till vilka som har anmält sig att det kommer folk både i lokalen och på nätet som kommer att komma till. Men vi startar. Vi brukar ju vara rätt så punktliga i det här sammanhanget. Det blir spännande föredrag idag. Jag ska bara säga väldigt kort. Sista chansen ni har att förse er med någon bok inför sommaren. Det vill man ju ha en bok att läsa på semestern. Eller ja, man kan ju ha semester 52 veckor om året som jag har, men då vill man ha ännu fler böcker. Så titta på bokbordet innan ni går. Sen ska vi i styrelsen mötas om några dagar och ha möte att planera för hösten och vi tar tacksamt emot alla förslag på talare eller andra saker som ni vill att det här sällskapet ska göra. With that I think I'll change language signal to Itamar. Uh, and I'll uh, just say we're very happy Itamar Marcus to have you with us. Very excited to hear what you have to say and I'll leave to you to introduce yourself with ever, whatever you want to say. So uh, thanks for joining us tonight. <clears throat> Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I've been to Sweden a number of times and I've met uh, uh, many, many wonderful people in Sweden. Uh, uh, Anneli, of course, who, who, who I've worked with in, in previous years in, uh, in Parliament. Uh, and many other wonderful people. So I'm very, very happy to uh, to be with you, uh, to be with you tonight. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> for my presentation, I will be showing you slides and videos and things from Palestinian television, also from their school books. So I'm going to share my screen. One second. And now we will uh, continue. Um, the topic of tonight's presentation is Palestinian teenage terrorists. Um, how does the Palestinian Authority turn good people into terrorists? And, and this is a, an interesting question that I'm asking. How does it turn good people into terrorists? Every society has a fringe. Every society has people who, uh, who, who are criminals. But what we find in Palestinian society is first of all, there are so many teenage terrorists, 17-year-olds, uh, uh, 15-year-olds who've been murderers. Uh, in addition, we have almost universal support for terror. So the question is, how does the Palestinian Authority, what messages does it give its people? So they don't only have a fringe supporting terror, but they have an entire society uh, supporting terror. This is the question that I will focus on today with this special focus also on Palestinian children. Now, the organization, my organization, Palestinian Media Watch, we look at everything we can find in the uh, in the official Palestinian sources from the open sources. We look at their television, their newspapers, their social media, uh, their Facebook page, their Twitter accounts of all their leaders to see what messages the people are giving, uh, the leadership are giving to the people. And we, and we study everything, including things like sports pages and school books, culture, crossword puzzles, you name it, we study it because we want to see the totality of messages coming to, to the people. And what we've learned is that there are two different worlds. There's the Arabic language world, the Arabic activities, the Arabic education, which is one message. And there's the English world, which is a completely different message. And of course, the Swedish world as well. Everything being told to foreigners is, can often be completely different than what they're telling to their own people. And today I want to give you a little window to that internal Palestinian world, what's really going on in that Palestinian world. Now, we're going to be talking today, as I said, <clears throat> about teenage terrorists or in general. And what I'm going to be showing you is the messages that come to the adults and also come to the children, the same messages and how they're done in different ways for adults and for children. I'm starting off with this. This is an article that appeared just about a year ago about one of the teenagers who had attacked an Israeli. And this is the article, Zudi Altwil, a 17-year-old youth was shot and died as a martyr. Local sources said that the martyr is an outstanding high school student in the science track. So this is what I'm saying. And I said before, it's not the fringe. He's a good kid. He's not a problem child. He's not someone who's been in jail. He's a good kid in science class. And yet on the way to school, he took this knife 
which he stabbed into the back of an Israeli, and then he was immediately shot and he died as a martyr. See, he's got all his school books here in the floor and what they call a martyr. So the question is, what would motivate a 17 year old to take a knife on the way to school and on the way home, essentially give up his life by stabbing an Israeli with soldiers around knowing that he's going to be shot. Now, it's not just him and this is what I mentioned. We have had dozens of teenage murderers over the years. Uh, this is just some of them that we recently put together, a 15 year old, went into the home of Daphne Meir, a young woman, and, and stabbed her to death in front of her children. Uh, a 16-year-old uh, murdered someone at a gas station. A 17-year-old stabbed Abi Fuld. A 17 and 19-year-old's cousins went into the home of the Fogel family and stabbed the two parents to death and the three children who were in their beds. Um, so what's bringing all these teenagers out to murder? And these are all the ages of some of the recent terror attacks, age 13, 14, 17, 14, uh, and many, many more. We just put a few of them down uh, for this list. Why are teenagers, again, that's my question, why are teenagers going out to terror? How does the PA turn good people and good children into terrorists? So what I'm going to show you is there are a number of different messages the PA gives to its people, many different libels. And all of these messages together motivate Palestinian, good Palestinians, and even good children to believe that killing Israelis and killing Jews is the right thing to do. It's the moral thing to do. It's the ethical choice. That's, that's what they've succeeded. And I want to show you some of their propaganda indoctrination to their people. Now, the first message is not even to do with Israel. It's about Jews. Jews, they teach their people are the source of evil in the world. And they do it from political and religious perspectives, almost everything. I wanna show you, this is, you're gonna see here uh, an educational documentary that was produced by Fatah. Uh, they put it on their Facebook page. Now Fatah is the political party of Mahmoud Abbas that runs the Palestinian Authority. He's the head of Fatah. I'm gonna be showing you today only Fatah and Palestinian Authority. I'm not showing you Hamas. Everybody recognizes that Hamas is a terror organization. I want to show you that Fatah is almost the identical terror organization as Hamas with their messages to the people. Now, this is produced by Fatah, <clears throat> an educational documentary on the situation and the history of the Jews in Europe. And this is some of the things they teach. <laughs> تبنى أعمدتها على الانفكاك عن البشر غرورا وشمئزازا من أغيار لا يرتقون إلى مكانتهم من أناس هم أفاع أبناء أفاع حسب رؤيتهم هناك تحاك كل مؤامرات الاستغلال المادي والبشري للغير ويكره سكان الأرض جيتوهات القوم ومخازن تصدير الحقد والاستغلال Literally, this entire documentary uh, turns history on its head uh, in describing the situation of the Jews in Europe. The Jews were, were put into ghettos in Europe by the non-Jewish populations that didn't want to have them amongst them. And here they're turning it on its head. <clears throat> the Jews put themselves in ghettos so that they could scheme against the non-Jews. Uh, here are some of the messages. The Jewish tribe led the project to enslave humanities. The Jews allied with the Nazis to accumulate wealth. Jews say only we are people, all others are animals. <clears throat> and then the main thing here, of course, the, the, the conclusion is Jews were hated because of their racism and filthy behavior. So what they do is they depict Jews as this evil force in Europe. And this is what they say explains European uh, anti-Semitism in the countries where there was anti-Semitism. It was because of their behavior. They brought anti-Semitism and hatred on themselves. This is the message coming that Fatah thought was important to teach um, to their people. And like I said, it's still available today uh, on their Facebook page. Now, these messages come from the top. <clears throat> <clears throat> Just a few months ago, Mahmoud Abbas, head of the Palestinian Authority, said the same thing in an interview. He said the source of the Jewish problem is not their religion, but rather their negative financial social role, causing extremist positions to be taken against them. Again, because of the Jews' behavior, they brought hatred on themselves and extreme positions against them. Uh, this is a message coming from the top to Palestinians. The Jews are the world's problem. And like I say, it comes from Abbas and it comes in their educational program. It comes across the specter of Palestinian society. 
Now, here's another example of this coming now from the religious side. That was more the nationalistic or secular side. Now it's coming from the religious side from the top religious figure in the Palestinian Authority. His name is Mahmoud al-Habash. Uh, he is Mahmoud Abbas's advisor on Islam and he's head of the Sharia courts. Listen to what he says here about the reason for the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. هذا الصراع المحتدم ها هنا في فلسطين بيننا وبين هذا الاحتلال المجرم صور صورة أخرى من صور الصراع التاريخي بين الحق والباطل بين الخير والشر على مدى التاريخ كان هناك صراع بين الخير والشر الخير يمثله الأنبياء وأتباع الأنبياء والشر يمثله الأبالسة وأتباع الأبالسة الشياطين وأتباع الشياطين ونحن ها هنا سنا بدعا من الأمر هو صراع بين حقيقتين حقيقة الخير وحقيقة الشر بين مشروعين مشروع الرحمن ومشروع الشيطان نعم <تصفيق> This is such an important concept that's being presented here. The, when Palestinian leaders come to Stockholm and any other place in Europe or around the world, they say that the conflict has to do with territory. They say that the conflict has to do with Israel's so-called occupation. To their own people, to their own people, they say something completely different. It's because of the inherently evil nature of the Jews. The Jews are connected to Satan. The Jews are Satan's representative on earth. The problem with Israel is the Jews, and we are Satan's project. It doesn't matter how much territory we have and how much territory we give them, we will always re remain Satan's project. This, again, coming from the most important religious figure in the Palestinian Authority, who not only was he appointed by Abbas to these positions, to be his advisor, he also gives almost all of the sermons on Fridays on Palestinian TV. He is the face of Islam. And uh, it's critically important to Palestinians. They're a very, very religious society. Uh, over 95% of the population is, is very religious, uh, is religious. They see the Quran as important to them. They see Islam as important to them. Uh, and their top religious figure is telling them that the Jews are Satan's representative on earth. Now, I want to show you how they pass this message on to children. This is a cartoon that ran twice during the Ramadan, during every day in the Ramadan on Palestinian television, teaching Jews, teaching Palestinian children how Jews at the beginning of Islam were working for Satan to try to destroy Muhammad and destroy Islam. <laughs> قد بنيت خطتي على نار الحقد والكراهية التي تملأ قلوب اليهود نحو. So imagine you're a three or four or five or six year old Palestinian child watching this cartoon about the beginnings of Islam and about Muhammad. Um, and what do you see? You see this ugly, scary Satan, and you see fire in his lair. And what does he tell? What does he tell you? He tells you that he is going to destroy Muhammad. To working with the Jews because the Jews have all this hatred for Muhammad in their heart. Now, everybody knows, everybody knows how important Muhammad is in Islamic tradition. You know how many people have been murdered around the world just for drawing a picture of Muhammad. Um, and here they are bringing up their children that the Jews are the ones who worked with Satan to try to destroy Muhammad. So this is, you're wondering again where the hatred is coming from. And this is what I'm trying to show you. The hatred has nothing to do with territory but the messages that the Palestinians give to the people. Now, this is official Palestinian TV. A uh, few months ago, uh, a Fatah official on TV. Okay, we're taking action for Allah, and in the end, our war is with the Jews. This is the message. It's coming from Fatah again. It's not just Hamas, it's Fatah, the Palestinian Authority, and Mahmoud Abbas's people, the same messages about the Jews, our war is with the Jews. Now, the result of all this hate messaging about Jews is that the Palestinian Authority, according to a recent poll, is the most anti-Semitic population in the world. The poll was taken by the ADL Global. It was done very scientifically. Uh, they do these polls every few years. Uh, and when they did the 
uh, the Middle East, this is what they found that the um, they were checking which which what were the anti-Semitic attitudes. Now these are attitudes that had nothing to do with Israel. The questions had to do with Jews controlling the world, Jews having too much money, Jews having Jews hating other people. And look at this: the West Bank and Gaza. Ninety-three percent of the adult population said probably true to most of the anti-Semitic ideas. Iraq was 92%, Yemen 88, Algeria, Libya, all the way down, uh, Egypt 75. But the, so it was high throughout the Muslim world, but it was the worst in the Muslim world in the Palestinian Authority. Now we at Palestinian Media Watch, we weren't surprised because we see the messages that these people are brainwashed with. Jews are Satan, Jews are connected to Satan, Jews are, uh, are, are, are trying to destroy, are scheming to destroy humanity. All of these are messages that the Palestinian Authority has given their people and therefore Jews are presented as this evil, evil force in the world. Now, second terrible message that Palestinians give their people is that Israel uh, not only is a threat because we're Jews, but as Israelis, we endanger Palestinians. Now, I wanna show you how they present this to their people. So first of all, I'm going back to that original story that I started with about the 17 year old boy. I left out one sentence and I wanna read it to you now completely. Here, this is, by the way, this picture did not appear in the Palestinian newspaper, only this picture. This picture appeared in the Israeli press. The Palestinian press just showed the 17 year old dead on the floor. And this is the way they presented it. A 17 year old youth was shot by the occupation forces and died as a martyr after a stabbing operation by extremist Israelis. So they don't let their own people know that he was a stabber. It, he was shot for no reason by Israeli forces. They use the expression regularly uh, that they were murdered by Israeli forces. Uh, here we see, because we see what he actually did, but no, they presented that Palestinian children are literally in danger of being murdered by Israelis for no reason. And here they're saying there was a stabbing operation by, by extremist Israelis. Now here, March of this year, just a little while ago at a time when the PA, the Palestinian Authority was trying to encourage violence against Israelis. Look at this video that they produced, which has absolutely nothing to do with the truth, but official PA TV, which is owned by the Palestinian Authority, this is the short little video they produced for PATV. Like I said, this was on television on uh, March 11th of this year, uh, and then it continued to run as a filler between shows. Israel is targeting children, targeting the media, uh, targeting Islamic holy places. These are people you should be fearful of. These are people you should hate. That's the message coming from Palestinian people. And of course, there is no truth to any, any of these messages. Now, it comes from the top. This is Mahmoud Abbas, head of the Palestinian Authority, on TV earlier this year. ونحن نعرف أن الهدف الصهيوني الأول هو إخلاء هذه البلاد من مسيحيها ومسلمها. So here you have Mahmoud Abbas uh, literally <coughs> saying uh, that Israelis goal, a prime Zionist goal is to empty the land of Christians and Muslims. Now, the Muslim population, as you know, is thriving within Israel. We have Muslims uh, on the Supreme Court, we have Muslim, we have Muslims in the government. We have our, our hospitals are filled with Muslim doctors. Our universities are filled. Palestine, Muslims are equal citizens, and so are Christians. In fact, when it comes to Christians, it is it is such an outrageous lie because Christians are being Christianity is being decimated in the Palestinian Authority. Uh, take a place like Bethlehem, where under Israeli rules, Christians were about 75% of the population of Bethlehem. Today, they're down around 10% of the population under Palestinian rule because Christians cannot live normally under Palestinian authority rule. And this is in Bethlehem, the holy city of Bethlehem for Christians. So this lie is a complete libel. Christians are doing beautifully in Israel. They're doing beautifully um, uh, everywhere they're under Israeli rule. The rest of the Middle East, Christians are being decimated, as you know, 
uh, in, in all of the different countries. So again, and this is coming from the top, this is Mahmoud Abbas on TV. Palestinians are being threatened by Israel. That is, that is his message. Now, one of the regular message, Israel is like the Nazis. This was a cartoon when Netanyahu was prime minister last year. Adolf Netanyahu, that's what it says here. And it's of course a picture combination uh, with, with resemblance to Netanyahu and, and of course Hitler. Here's Jabril Rajoub, senior Palestinian figure. Earlier this year, he talks about Israel being the model of Nazi thinking, a new Nazi. But I want to show you May 5th, just literally a few weeks ago, uh, the same Jabril Rajoub, the new Nazis who are committing acts of terror, whose prisons are identical copy of Auschwitz and the death camps. Now, how can an official leader, uh, by the way, he's not just a leader in the last in the last Fatah elections, uh, he got the highest number of votes in the Central Committee, meaning that when Mahmoud Abbas was 85 leaves, there's a good possibility he's going to be the next leader. And he's the one who comes and says that Israeli prison camps are like Auschwitz and the death camps. Um, this is the kind of libels that they, that they give to their people. This was <clears throat> just a couple of weeks ago as well, April 21st. This is the Palestinian Authority expert on Israeli affairs on television. He said, Israel has declared religious war against Islam and Christianity. Again, this libel. And then he says, Israel's policy is that the Jew is Aryan, as in Germany. Most Israeli leaders are students of Goebbels, the minister of propaganda of the Nazis. So this demonization, we are like the Nazis, is a constant messaging of the Palestinians. Sorry. Again, you're in danger because Israelis are like Nazis. You're in danger because they're killing you. You're in danger because it's targeted. Now, <clears throat> this brings me to, I want to talk briefly about the, the libel around the death of Shireen Abu Akhla. I'm sure you're all following. I, if, if Swedish media is anything like the other international media I've been seeing, uh, the, the death of Shireen Abu Akhla is being blamed, blamed on Israel. Just in case somebody doesn't know, Shireen Abu Akhla was an Al, Al Jazeera television journalist. She's been working. Uh, she is Palestinian. She lives in Jerusalem. Uh, she lived in Jerusalem. Uh, she's been doing this for 20 years. And then last Friday, uh, when there was uh, Israel was going after terrorists and there was a lot of firing going on, the um, she was hit by a bullet. No one knows where the bullet came from. And this is the key here. No one knows whether it was a Palestinian bullet or an Israeli bullet. In fact, there was one video where Palestinians are screaming and cheering that they, they thought they had shot an Israeli soldier and he fell down. Well, no Israeli soldier was shot. She's the only person who was hit and fell down. So there's a good possibility that they actually were the ones who were thinking she was uh, an Israeli soldier because she had a helmet on and a flak jacket and they were far away. They probably shot her. But in any case, nobody knows. But look at, I want to show you, that doesn't stop the Palestinian Authority from creating this incredible libel. And the following quotes are just some of the quotes coming from Palestinian leadership and their official media. Listen to this. Israel intentionally and deliberately shot Abu Akhla. Israel's assassination of Abu Akhla, the crime of executing Abu Akhla, Israel's violent assassination, deliberate targeting, she was murdered, heinous crime. Israel's atrocious assassination of Palestinian journalists. Israel has a shoot to kill policy against the Palestinian people. Israel openly rewards soldiers for killing of Palestinians, including journalists. Israel gives a green light for its soldiers to shoot and kill Palestinians, Every bit of it is a lie, but this is the kind of poison that Palestinians are constantly being exposed to nonstop. Now it's focused on the death of this one particular journalist. Uh, now I just wanna show you, even to this extent, this is May 11th, again, just a week ago. Um, this is the head of the Palestinian journalist syndicate. All the evidence confirms there was deliberate assassination operation and that the murderer knew he was targeting Shireen Abu Akhla and targeting a group of journalists who were at the site. All the evidence, what evidence? There's no evidence at all that, that, can, that anybody knew what was happening and that, or how she was killed. Not only that, you know who says this? I want to show you. <clears throat> the, as soon as she was killed, the Palestinian Authority took her body to uh, the chief pathologist of the Palestinian Authority and they asked him to examine the body. And he came out after examining the body, all the journalists were there and they were just, this is after all the Palestinian leaders have already blamed Israel. 
and listen to what their own chief pathologist said. لا يمكن لا يمكن الآن التصريح بأي معلومة لأن الشركاء الموجودين من المعمل الجنائي ومن المختبر الجنائي كل حسب تخصصه سوف يقومون. Okay, it's impossible to determine. So you've got the chief Palestinian professional, the only Palestinian professional. He says, we've all studied the body. We've studied it from all the existing evidence and we can't tell, there's no way of knowing. And this was on Palestinian television. You can be sure the Palestinian leadership heard this. It didn't make any difference. The Palestinians have continued with those lies that you saw, libels and lies, libels and lies. Israel kills Palestinians intentionally. We've given our, our, our soldiers the okay to go and kill Palestinians. Okay. Now, one final thing about the killing of, of, of Shireen. Uh, who is responsible? And, and this is something that I want to point out to you. I, I found this interesting cartoon. It wasn't talking about this particular attack, uh, an event. It was talking about something else. So this is a cartoon. Hamas attacks Israel. Hamas attacks Israel. Hamas attacks Israel. Israel shoots a missile back to defend itself. And this is the news report. Israel attacked Gaza today. Um, why do I say this is, first of all, I'm sure you've all witnessed this many times in Sweden and, as, and I've seen it from the United States and in other countries in Europe. Um, Israel's under attack from terror all the time, from Hamas, whoever it be. And um, when we respond and there are injuries or there are people who are killed, we're always held responsible. The fact is that Israel went in to get terrorists. We've lost 19 people in terror attacks, mostly coming from the area of Jenin. We went into Jenin to get the terrorists before they would go into Israeli cities. We had 100% right to go after those terrorists, 100% right under international law and every moral law. We had not only a right, we had an obligation to go in and get those terrorists. And when the Palestinian terrorists who were there started firing on Israel, Israel had a right to fight back. It doesn't even matter in terms of responsibility if it was an Israeli bullet or a Palestinian bullet. It is them, the terrorists who are responsible. They're the ones who started this fight. They're the ones who have been killing Israelis. They're the ones who Israel had to defend itself from. So it doesn't even matter whose bullet it was. Responsibility is with the terrorists because they have caused this entire confrontation. So that's something I just had to say here clearly because you're gonna be hearing all sorts of things, I'm sure in, in, in Swedish press, um, as this case, as this story, which hasn't yet completed, continues to develop now. Okay, so the first message is the Jews are the world's problem. Second is Israel targets Palestinians. Now, the third is that Israel not just targets Palestinians, we target Islamic holy sites. Now, this is a very, very important libel, a very lethal libel. Um, if you look at the history of Israel with the Palestinian Authority since the 1920s, all of the worst attacks on Jews and Israelis have all been connected to the libel that Israel is threatening Al-Aqsa Mosque. Israel is defiling Al-Aqsa Mosque. Israel is going to destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Um, in 1929, there were the, 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 the awful uh, uh, riots and massacres of Jews in Hebron and Safad because the Mufti said Al-Aqsa is in danger from, from the Jews. Uh, the the so-called Intifada from 2000, 2004, where Israel lost 1,200 people to suicide bombings, primarily suicide bombings. What was it called for Palestinians? The Al-Aqsa Intifada, because <clears throat> they claimed Israel was defiling Al-Aqsa. Everything. So when they say Israel's threatening holy sites, it's very serious. Now, I want to show you how they tell their people this message. This is a <clears throat> significant one in the date here. They, they say it all the time, but I'm showing you one from a year ago because it's very important, the date. Uh, this is a senior Palestinian religious figure. He's actually trains people in how to give sermons. He said, we must defend the Al-Aqsa Mosque. They, Israel, is planning to destroy it and build the alleged temple. It's a religious obligation and national obligation to defend the mosque. Now, what day did he say this? He said this May 9th. What happened May 10th? One day later, Hamas shot missiles from Gaza to attack Jerusalem. Um, and that led to a 10-day war in which Hamas shelled, uh, launched 4,300 missiles 
against Israeli civilian targets 100% over a period of 10 days. Over 400 missiles a day it targeted against Israel. Um, why? Supposedly in defense of Al-Aqsa, because Israel is planning to destroy Al-Aqsa. This is uh, how lethal this libel is. And look at this. Every Palestinian child is brought up with this libel. Uh, this is a picture from a Palestinian school book for grade seven. And it says over here in the Arabic, look at the following cartoon and write a paragraph about the message that the illustrator wanted to convey. So what is the message? It's clear. You see a tractor here with a Jewish star, Star of David, and it's under the, the mosque, of the, the, the Golden Dome Mosque, and it's digging. And you see here, it's going to crack. Israel is planning to destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque. That's what's being said here in this cartoon. And every Palestinian child is getting this school book because they all get the same school books. It's a, a Ministry of Education school book. So that Palestinian children literally grow up with this message, Israel is destroying the mosque. Now, a few months ago, they decided to run some cartoons on Palestinian TV. One of them repeated just a few days ago in May of this year. And these are a few seconds of each of these cartoons on official PA TV. Okay, and like I said, this last one appeared again on PATV just last week. Uh, with all the violence going on, with all the terror, they thought it was a good idea to remind them that Israel is this uh, evil, disgusting looking snake and it's trying to destroy Jerusalem. So, so, and the mosques in Jerusalem. So this is the kind of hatred that the PA is spreading to, to its people. Just one more earlier this month uh, about the holy sites, May 1st, just a few days ago. البركة التي تحف الحرم صباح مساء كما لدى الربيع شاءت إرادة الله أن تدنس بهؤلاء الأغراب من شذاذ الآفاق كأسراب البغاثي البركة التي تحف الحرم Israelis pass through like a flock of vultures that's what they're saying and we're defiling when we go to the either the, the temple mount they say or here we're talking about the cave of the patriarchs in Hebron we defile it. We are foreigners who came from the ends of the earth. This is the message coming through on official PA TV. So that's the third message. The third message is that all of these have to do with Israel's behavior. Israel's essence has nothing to do with territory. Um, now, now we come to the fourth message, which finally does deal with territory. But, uh, and this is what's critical, it's not a territory that you think. It's not a territory that they tell the, the, the leaders in Stockholm when they come to Sweden. When the Palestinian leadership comes to be at Stockholm, be it to Brussels, to the EU, be it the United States, to Washington, they say that they're concerned with Israel's presence in what they call the West Bank, what we call Judea and Samaria, uh, Jerusalem, and sometimes they say the Gaza Strip as well. That's what they claim they want. I wanna show you what they tell their own people that it has nothing to do just with those territories. Israel's existence is the problem. And I want to show you this in their own words here. So, excuse me, here we have Mahmoud Abbas's advisor again. First of all, coming to deny that Israel has any right to exist. And what does he say? He says, Israel's history is fables, lies, and fake inventions. We falsely claim the presence of the so-called ancient kingdom of Israel, uh, even though there is no truth to this. So he's saying, first of all, he erases all of the history that appears in the Bible. But of course, I'm sure as you know, so much of biblical history, certainly the existence of, of the Jewish people, the nation of Israel, 
has been corroborated not only by archaeological finds and thousands of coins and stamps, but also by uh, many of the nations who lived around Israel uh, at the time. Uh, so for example, just to give you one example, uh, this is a, uh, what's called the Kirk monolith. It, it's the, the inscription of the Assyrian king Shalmaneser III, who was in the 9th century BCE. And he's just talking about how he defeated all these different countries, which was one of the countries he defeated. He defeated the 10,000 soldiers of King Ahab of the Israelite. Now, this happens to be the exact story that's told in the Bible uh, in Kings 2, chapter 19. So there is so much corroboration of the stories of the Bible, yet what does he say? He says all of Jewish history in the Bible is fables, lies, fake inventions, and there is no such so-called ancient kingdom of Israel. So the first thing he tells the people is that we have no right to exist, that we never had a history in the land. Now I'm gonna show you another example of him speaking. This is that same top religious figure. Listen to the way he describes the Jews. يدعي هذا الفريدمان أن هذه الأرض هي أرض مقدسة لليهود طبعا كل هذا استنادا إلى روايات خرافية جزافية الغرباء سيرحلون اليوم أو غدا هذه الأرض تلفظ خبثة The land spits out its scum, scum is its filth, its dirt, uh, it spits out everything foreign, uh, it will not be anything but ours, he says, this is the top religious figure telling the people that everything, everything is lies. Now, not only do they say that Israel has no history, they literally have turned all of Israel's history into Palestinian history. And I'll show you an example. This is no one less than the Prime Minister, Mohammed Shtaya, talking on television earlier this year. And he creates a fantasy as if there was a thousands of years Palestinian people. Of course, we know that the first time that Muslims, Palestinian, Muslim Arabs defined themselves as Palestinians was last century. This debate as to when exactly it happened. Most people had say it happened with the beginning of the PLO in 1965. Uh, certainly, certainly not before last century, but that doesn't stop the Palestinians from erasing Jewish history in the land. And here's the prime minister. Look at this fantasy history he's telling his people. ونحن متجذرون هنا هزمنا الهكسوس والرومان واليونان والفرس والتتار والفراعنة وكل الغزاة الذين عبروا على فلسطين هزمناهم وباسم الشهداء سوف نهزم هذا الاح Okay, it's just an amazing, amazing fantasy. They've defeated the Romans, the Greeks, the Persians, the Pharaohs. Uh, this is the prime minister, again, coming from the top of the Palestinian Authority, this fantasy. They weren't here. We were here. Now, we didn't defeat the Romans and the Greeks and everybody. But the point is, we were with them. They were, Persia, we had, a, we had a history with Persia. We had a history then later with Greece. We had a history with the Romans. Um, but he turns it all into Palestinian, Palestinian history. Now, because of this, and this is the critical thing, Palestine is therefore from the river to the sea. It's not Judea, Samaria, West Bank. It's not, it is everything. And I'm gonna show you how they teach it to their people because this is critical. This lie, they come to your state and they tell your country, we just wanna compromise, get the Jews out of that land. But this is what they really want. This is from the Palestinian Authority Ministry of Education uh, Facebook page. A few months ago, they had a big, big event connected to what they were calling Palestinian nationalism. Um, and this is what they showed them. You see here a picture of the map of all of Israel and the Palestinian areas. Here's Gaza, here's Judea, Samaria, here's Jerusalem, here's the West Bank. And what do they call it? My homeland. Here they have the same map and they're even more explicit. Palestine, the entire land is ours from the sea to the river. Here's the sea, here's the river, the Jordan River, everything. And this is the Ministry of Education. This is the Ministry of Education. Let there be no doubt. This is the message Palestinian children are growing up on. Here's a video from PATV Children's Program. Listen to this identical message. And you'll, you'll see the, the cities of Israel along the coast here all identified as if Israel doesn't exist and it's all Palestine. يمتد الساحل الفلسطيني من جبل الكرمل شمالا إلى رفح 
على الحدود المصرية جنوبا ويقع بين المرتفعات الجبلية الفلسطينية شرقا والبحر الأبيض المتوسط غربا فيه العديد من الموانئ مثل ميناء حيفا وعكا ويافا وأسدود وعسقلان وغزة وقد توافدت عليه أمم مختلفة عبر العصور طمعا للاستفادة من موقعه وما زال الساحل الفلسطيني تحت ال Okay, as you saw there, Haifa, Akko, Jaffa, Ashdod, Ashkelon, all Israeli cities, they're all Palestinian cities. Uh, and then at the end, they say one thing, why don't you have these cities now? Because the Palestinian plain has been under Israeli occupation since 1948. So important. They tell the world they're against the occupation. They tell their own people, all of Israel is an occupation. 1948, of course, is when Israel was founded. 1967 is when the West Bank, Judea Mary came under Israeli rule. So it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with Israel's existence. That's what they are teaching their people, their children. The problem is all of Israel is an occupation. Now, show this to you just literally how they pass this on. So they do it, you saw in, in schools, they do it in educational TV programs. This was fantastic. This was just uh, a month ago on PA TV. They did a Ramadan quiz. They were asking people in the streets. So one of the questions they said, define which countries have borders with Palestine. So listen to the correct answer in this Palestinian TV quiz in which they would actually get some money. What is Palestine from the four countries? You have from the Arab Sea, 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 the Arab Sea. Okay, so he wins his 20 Jordanian dinars for, for answering the question correctly. And of course, that means that they're teaching them that there is no real existence of Israel because Palestine goes all the way down to Eilat, all the way up to the north. Everything, everything is said to be Palestinian. So they use every which way to teach these messages. Um, now, I've been talking about in each example with the religious side as well. Now, here is something that is really, really dangerous. Um, the Palestinian Authority teaches its people that not only must they destroy Israel in the name of Palestinian nationalism, they say that in the name of Islam, it's prohibited to allow Israel to exist. And why is that? Because they teach them, and this is a religious lesson from a few months ago, the land of Israel is Waq from the Mediterranean Sea to the Jordan River. What is Waq? Waq is holy Islamic land. And a Muslim, according to Islamic belief, is not allowed to leave waqf in the hands of an infidel. So what they're telling them here is that literally Palestinians have a Muslim Islamic obligation, nothing to do with Palestinians. As Muslims, they are not to accept, allowed to accept Israel's right to exist. So that even if, even if a secular Palestinian leader in the future were to come and say, okay, we decided to recognize Israel's right to exist, they're not allowed to, because they're being told that it's holy waqf land, and they're not allowed to. And it's not just this particular preacher. The Mufti has said it, the same preacher I showed you before. And this is what he says here, because it's waqf, granting ownership over Islamic territory or part of it to enemies is invalid and constitutes treason. So according to the Mufti, under Islamic law, under Islamic law, anyone who gives away or accepts Israel's existence, um, it's not valid because Islam overrules it and it's also treason. So these are the messages coming from the Palestinian Authority. What are the things we see from this? Look at the way children speak on Palestinian TV. And here, twice within a short period of time, they had children speaking in English about the borders of Palestine. No matter how long the Israel occupation lasted, Palestine will remain for the Palestinians from the sea and the river. They are the owners of the land. They are going to free our land together and hand in hand. Palestine will be free from the river to the sea. Okay, so these are the messages coming to the people about the land now. And this brings us to, to the conclusion. Uh, to getting to the question we opened with, supporting terror, promoting terror. They take all of these messages together. 
the Jews are threatening humanity. The Jews are threatening Palestinians. Israelis are threatening Palestinians, killing Palestinians. Uh, Israel has no right to exist. It's all lies. We have no right to be here. Uh, Israelis are targeting Palestinians. Therefore, put up all of this together, fighting Israelis and killing Israelis is really self-defense. It, it's, it's the ethical thing to do. It's the moral thing to do. And they also say it's justified under international law, and it's even mandated by the Quran. All of this comes as a result of everything I've told you up to now, which are constant hate messaging. It comes to the message conclusions. Therefore, Israelis can be fought and can be killed. Now, I'll show it to you first, the secular international law. <clears throat> Here they had a professor of international law on television not so long ago. We've heard it from the leaders as well. And what he says is that international law permits Palestinian terror. He doesn't call it terror. He calls resistance uh, and prohibits Israel from stopping, prohibits Israel from stopping Palestinians from killing them in terror. It, it's shocking, but listen, I'll play that part of this of this message to him, listen to those words. Okay. It pro I'm sorry, it prohibited, he said, that Israel is prohibited from attacking and killing a Palestinian, even if he's even while carrying out an action against the occupation. What is an action? An action is a terror attack. So if a Palestinian is carrying out a terror attack, they have a right to do it, and Israel is prohibited from killing them. That's what he's saying. And he's saying this is international law. This is what is being said to Palestinians about killing Israelis. And Israel, therefore, has no right to self-defense under international law. And now I want to show you that same religious figure. He's saying they have a right to do it. This religious figure is saying you have to do it. The same religious figure, Mahmoud al-Abash, Abbas's advisor on TV, he quotes from the Quran. First, I'm going to play the beginning of his quote. إذن اقتلوا هم عائدة على المعتدين ولا تعتدوا إن الله لا يحب المعتدين واقتلوهم. He starts off saying that the Quran commands you to kill them because Allah does not like the transgressors. Therefore, kill them. And then he says, who are the transgressors that Allah doesn't like? Now, remember, he is just we've been learning. And the Palestinians have learned since they're in literally in kindergarten that all of Israel is Palestinian land. We've stolen their homes. We've stolen their homeland. That's what they're learning. He says, who are those people who the Quran tells you to kill? He says the following. If someone attacks me, my home, my land, my homeland, my property, my honor, family, existence, your rights, I'm commanded to fight. I'm allowed to kill him. <clears throat> and then he ends and says, quoting the Quran, kill them wherever you find them. So you've got the top Palestinian religious figure saying that killing is something that is mandated by the Quran to get Israelis off this land. That's what he's saying. To them. <clears throat> International law says you're allowed to do it. The Quran says you have to do it. That's the message coming from the PA. Now, listen to him now. April 3rd, a month ago, there's violence and riots and murders going on all over the place. He goes on TV. And listen to what he says. كيف كان هذا الشهر في حياة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم؟ إنه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في رمضان خاض معركة بدر الكبرى. سقط شهداء من أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أربعة عشر شهيد. ما قالوش الصحابة يعني يا رسول الله الدنيا صيام وحر تمام في شهر رمضان من العام الثامن. للهجرة فتح النبي والمسلمون مكة المكرمة لم يقل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في أنه دين رمضان والناس صايمين وطب خليها بعد رمضان كيف يمكن أن نبني الحياة ونؤسس للإسلام إذا كنا كسالة لا قدر الله رمضان ليس شهر كسل ولكنه شهر عمل وشهر جد وشهر اجتهاد this is an unbelievable speech, again, coming from the top religious figure. Just remember, we lost, we lost 19 people murdered during this period of the primarily connected to the Ramadan. And the top religious figure goes on TV and says to them that their prophet, Muhammad, he, he launched his wars 
during the Ramadan and you have to copy the prophet. And this should be for you a month of jihad, conquest and victory. This is the Palestinian Authority. It's not Hamas. It's the Palestinian Authority, top religious figure. And of course, we saw the results of it. So the results of it with incessant attacks. By the way, we had another terror attack today. We had two more terror attacks yesterday, all three of them unsuccessful. But this is the message coming from the leadership. Go out and kill Israelis, just like the prophet did his wars uh, during, during this period. Now, uh, show you another incredible uh, speech that was on Palestinian TV just literally a month ago. Today, listen to this. Allah delight us with the extermination of the evil Jews. Literally, that's the word he used, praying for genocide, praying for extermination on official Palestinian television. No one in the world complained. You can be sure that the entire media and, and leadership of Sweden would be jumping up and down and, and condemning Israel. If anyone, even a private person, went on TV and said exterminate and here, Sermon on PA TV, uh, prayer for Ramadan, Allah delight us with the extermination of the evil Jews. Now, this was a funeral on May 11th. Listen to what the Palestinians are tweeting. At the funeral of the Al Jazeera journalist Abu Akla, who we spoke about earlier, listen to what they say. <laughs> Sweet it is to kill Jews. You see, it's all connected. It's all connected. Uh, the hatred of the Jews, how sweet it is to kill Jews, nothing to do with territory. It's sweet to kill Jews. These are the messages that Palestinians are learning. And then when they're at a funeral, this is the these are the chants that they scream uh, during the funeral. Now, martyrdom, the Palestinian Authority death worship. This is a very important concept to discuss for just a moment. Um, people naturally fear death. So fear of death in a terror attack is something that most people, is a deterrent for most people. To stop this deterrence, the Palestinian Authority tells their people regularly that it is wonderful to be a martyr. The martyr in paradise marries 72 virgins. The martyr, um, not only does he have all of his sins erased, but 70 members of their family, he, inter, he interludes for them and he, gets, and, he, and he gets them into heaven as well. Uh, and a whole series of other wonderful things. So they tell people, they're encouraging people not to fear martyrdom. In fact, they say it's the best thing that can happen to them. And I wanna show you some of these examples, how they teach this to the people and even how they teach it to their kids. So here you have, for example, <clears throat> March of this year, uh, a terrorist who was killed, his brother went on TV and said, "I." that his brother told him, I want to die as a martyr and meet the creator. Uh, this, is, this is what he told his brother. Uh, we only have a few minutes, so I won't play them. I'll just read the main points. Here, also, this is all in the last few weeks, April 30th. Uh, what are they chanting? Oh, mother of the martyr, what joy you have merited. What does that mean? She just lost her son in a, it, who was attacking Israelis. And they yelled to her, mother of the martyr, what joy you've merited. You have joy because your child uh, is now dead and, and is a martyr. Here's another example of a Palestinian who, before he was killed, he told his father, my cousin and I, one of us has to be a martyr. So it's not fair that in our family, no one's a martyr. And then he went out and he got himself killed as a martyr. Uh, here, another person is saying, May 3rd, Terrorist who is martyred is an advocate for Allah for his family. All of this incredible martyrdom promotion, literally a death wish society. And here, look at this one. I'll play one of them for you. We love life. We love martyrdom death as we love life. Fatah Revolutionary Council member on television just a few weeks ago. Constant messaging. Don't fear death because death is good. Now. I wanted to show you one more uh, example of this martyrdom promotion um, for children. It's not just for adults, for, for children. This is something that Fatah put on their Facebook page. It's a little poem by a little girl. And the story picks up that the boy, a little boy, isn't finishing his dinner. So his mother comes and promises him 
a present if he finishes his dinner and listen to this text that this girl recites. Okay, our weapon is Islam and our ammunition is our children. You are destined for martyrdom. If anything, this is the most horrific child abuse to tell a child that your life has no value in and of itself. Your only value is to be a martyr and to be ammunition for Islam. Literally, you are ammunition for Islam. As she said this, the moderator and the interviewer in the room was literally clapping as she said this last line that our children are ammunition for Islam. Uh, and then Fatah took this video, which was originally a radio broadcast, and they put the video on their Facebook page. Fatah thought this was an important message for their, for their hundreds, 300,000 uh, youth, prim <coughs> primarily, who followed them on Facebook. They put this on their Facebook page. Now, I give you one more example of this. Fatah leader Abbas Saki. Here he's turning not to the children to be martyrs, but look at the way he talks about the Palestinian mothers. بتلاقي إحنا عنا المرأة الفلسطينية ليست كأي مرأة في العالم. أي مرأة بكون حرص على الحبيب، حرص على ابنها، حرص على زوجها. أكبر بكثير ولما بموت موت طبيعي حتى بتمزع أخدادها وبتنجن الله أكبر فقدت المرأة الفلسطينية من كثر العذابات والمذابح اللي شافتها شافت ابنها رخيص على الوطن وشافت القضية. The Palestinian mothers look at their children as insignificant because of what they've gone through. So this is the totality of the message. There are a few more things that I would show you, but our hour is up and you'll have questions. Maybe we'll come to some of the things, but you have to understand what's going on and, and why Palestinians are so violent and why they're seeking death and why they're going out as martyrs because the Palestinian Authority tells their people and they, and they bring their children up with the message. First of all, the Jews are the source of evil in the world. The Jews were the source of evil in Europe. The Jews are the ones who wanted to destroy Muhammad. Uh, children are brought up with this. The Jews want to, Israel wants to kill Palestinians. We give instructions to kill Palestinians. Um, we want to destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque. We, we want to destroy their holy sites. Uh, and, there, and we have no right to exist as a nation. So as individuals, as Jews, we are a danger. As a nation, we have no rights. Therefore, if you're a good Palestinian, you are going to go out and fight and even die as a martyr because that's what a good Palestinian will do. And you know what? Innocent 17-year-olds, 15-year-olds, 14-year-olds being brought up in this message, they believe that Israelis are this demonic force in the world. Literally, they're convinced. Uh, and therefore, they feel they are doing an ethical thing, a moral thing by going out and killing Israelis. And that's why we have 15-year-olds who can go into the house of a young mother, Daphne Meir, and in front of her children, in front of her five children, he stabbed her to death in front of them. That's it. Because he was so convinced that every Israeli is a demon and every Israeli uh, deserves death. This is the world of the Palestinian child. This is how the Palestinian Authority creates teenage terrorists. Um, one of the great tragedies is that the Palestinian Authority could not do this, could not do this if they weren't funded so heavily by the Western countries in the world. Um, the Western countries used their funding, uh, demanded that their funding uh, would only be received if the Palestinian Authority would change all these hate messages. Um, we'd have a whole different world. But let's pause now. Let's take your let's take our 10 minute break and we'll come back for questions. And you might want to ask me more about any of these things when we come back. OK, um, thank you very much, Itamar. Um, 
The first question uh, is a combination of what I wanted to ask and what a, I would say shocked lady in the audience came up to me with. It's about who listens to what you say, to what you find. Uh, and the follow-up question to that is why is this not known or recognized in the West? Okay, so first of all, this, this goes out to all Palestinians on Palestinian TV. Um, but, but you have to realize that there were some things I didn't get to at the end of my presentation. These messages come not only through Palestinian television and, and the school books, as I showed you, but they also come through culture. They also come through sports. We've had uh, every year, every year, uh, there are every month, there are sporting events uh, named after Palestinian terrorists and mass murderers. There are summer camps named after Palestinian terrorists. So it's it's not just the messages, it's the activities of the Palestinian army. There are, there are five schools named after a female terrorist who murdered 37 people, including 12 children. Her name is Dalal Mugabe. Mugabe. Yes, Dalal Mugabe. And there are another 31 schools named after different terrorist murderers. So uh, uh, summer camps named after them. So. Uh, uh, th there's one school in Bethlehem where the students walk in and there's this metal slab in the front, which is an honorary slab of stone, um, a big, I'm sorry, a, a stone slab. And it says on it in honor of the martyrs of the Intifada. And it specifically mentions Ayatollah Akbas, a 17 year old girl suicide bomber. So the kids get the messages everywhere. They get them in the text of the school books, get them in the names of the schools and summer camps and names of streets. Um, all of these messages are coming everywhere to them. Uh, and who's listening when we when we talk about it? Um, there has been a tremendous, tremendous interest in the world uh, and the international community. One of the big stories that we that we exposed is that the Palestinian Authority pays salaries to terrorists. Every terrorist in prison gets a monthly salary that could reach up till 12,000 shekel, which is about, uh, about $4,000 a month. $4,000 a month is four times the average Palestinian salary, four times. So you're talking about you get a massive salary if you're going to jail, uh, for murdering Israelis and going to jail. The world calls us pay for slay. After Palestinian Media Watch exposed this, it took a long time. The world finally listened. The United States under Trump cut off all funding. The Netherlands cut off all funding. Uh, Canada cut off all funding to the PA. Australia cut off all funding, all because of these stories, because of the incitement and then the school books and all the others. The European Union now is freezing, uh, literally hasn't given money to the Palestinian Authority in a year because of all of this. So yes, it's taken a long time for the world to listen, but the world finally now is listening. Uh, there are some countries that are still mistakenly giving the Palestinian Authority political support, and that support encourages them to continue. And that's what I mentioned at the end. Sweden, unfortunately, is one of those countries that continues to support the Palestinian Authority, even though, even though everything that they say and do and their behavior would be enough to define them as a terror organization. Yes, as a terror organization, as you saw. And yet Sweden is giving them both political support as well as financial support. But uh, OK, let me rephrase it then, because this shocked lady, <laughs> I said, uh, um, the question is, it, it's not generally known. I mean, you, you will have no problem convincing uh, an audience like you have tonight, uh, but this is not written about in our media. We all know now that Putin is a liar. Why don't every Swedish citizen know that Abbas is a liar? Okay, and that, of course, is <laughs> your, your challenge with this question, and I'm challenged with it just as much. Because there's a certain resistance uh, in a lot of the media to present Israel's side, a lot of the media just ignores this. Not always, uh, but a lot of them do. Um, what I have to do, and for that reason, for that reason, most of Palestinian Media Watch work overseas, most of the work that I do overseas is directly with parliaments. Um, uh, I in, in, in years before COVID, I would reach between 20 and 30 different parliaments and governments a year. 
Uh, I'll meet with government officials, I'll meet with members of parliament. When they say this, see this material, they are as horrified as you. Um, in general, uh, like I said, the, the parliaments have cut off funding. The PA gets today around 10% of its foreign funding as it used to get years ago. They still get the political support, but they're not getting the foreign funding anymore. Uh, and it's because of this, it's because of our work. Uh, one of the things that we would like to do is increase the impact in the media. And one of the ways we're doing that, and I'll just give you an example, this is something that we can talk about in terms of follow-up between Palestinian Media Watch and, uh, and your uh, organization. Um, is, uh, is something that we recently did in, uh, in Norway. We met in Norway with members of parliament who invited all the pro-Israel NGOs to parliament on the same day. I spoke to members of parliament, I spoke to the NGOs, and we all talked about all the NGOs working together with the members of parliament to disseminate Palestinian Media Watch material and stories <clears throat> so that when I go to parliament, it's not just a one-day event there, but when I go where we have a story, we send it to the MPs and, and simultaneously all the pro-Israel NGOs send it out on social media, send it out um, uh, to their regular media. They, they try to write up eds for the newspaper. So the idea is having a better coordination. And one of the things that uh, I hope to talk to Annalie about afterwards, we actually started talking about already, is a, a, a possible trip to, to uh, to Sweden, where we could meet some kind of a similar event where the members of parliament would invite your organization, other NGOs, and we would then build a way that we could all work together so that the story is not just for the members of parliament, but that it actually does make it to the media. And of course, it'll impact much, much more that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I have one more, but uh, I'll ask any other question here in the audience? Can, okay, I go to my other question. Uh, as I told you before we started the meeting, I, I met with this Palestinian girl the other day and her history was a different history than, <laughs> than mine. Uh, her narrative was totally Palestinian. Uh, do, are there other, other organizations in the world somehow who do the same job as you do. I mean, from a Palestinian uh, point of view, you're just a Jew. We can't believe a Jew. And I am sort of an agent for the Jews, so I can't be believed. Are there other sources which can corroborate what you say? Okay, so I'm going to <clears throat> share my screen for one second. Uh, Palestinian Media Watch has been working lately with Palestinians. Um, and I want to show you, uh, there's one Palestinian who has already been meeting with me, uh, with, with, with uh, members of parliament when they've come here, and he will hopefully start traveling to Europe with me. Um, Palestinians who finally, who, who have an opportunity to meet Israelis and, and learn about what's really going on, sometimes they have that moment where they realize that their whole life has been a lie. And I want to show you this um, video of this uh, particular Palestinian who, like I said, I've been working with for a number of years. Let me find this video here. Listen to what he has to say. Uh, his face and, uh, and his voice has to be changed a little bit. Um, but he represents a growing number of Palestinians who are completely fed up with their own leadership. They realize they've been brought up on lies. They realize that Israel has been better to them, literally, than their own leaders have been. Uh, I want to play this video and then I'll discuss this a bit more. My name is Ali. I was born and raised in a refugee camp in West Bank. Um, I have a BA degree. We are a product of an education system that want us to hate, that want us to be violent. This the value of the compromise for instance is completely absent from the education system. Because you compromise, it means you are a dishonored person. I've never, I've never heard the word peace in the Palestinian education system. This word has a very negative connotation. Peace means betrayal. As any Palestinian in this place, I used to think that the Palestinians, the, sorry, the Israelis and the Jews, they faked the Holocaust so they can get sympathy from the Europeans and from the Americans, from the international national world, so they can support their colonizer uh, aspirations. Because we still think and educate 
our kids that the Jews are colonizers who came from the nowhere just to occupy this piece of land because they don't have any other place to go. The way that they portray to us that your enemy is the... Okay, you, you already saw um, in some of the things that he said, he was mentioning some of those very things that I showed you in my presentation, because these are messages that repeat over and over again. Those are the messages I chose to show you. Uh, and those are the messages he was brought up on. Um, his story is amazing how he met one Israeli and eventually he was sure the Israeli was planning to kill him. And then he met over and over and over again. And finally, in the end, he realized that his whole life has been a lie. And since then, he's been working for peace and meeting with Israelis who are working for peace. Um, it's, uh, it's an incredible story. And there are others like him. The, the only sad thing about this, or one of the very sad things, when I met with him with members of parliament from Netherlands uh, here in, uh, in Israel, and one of them said, asked him, how many people have opinions like yours? And he said, I don't know. I'm afraid to share my opinions with anyone because I could end up, if I did, I'd end up in a Palestinian jail and I could be tortured or, or worse, could be killed. So someone said to him, well, how many people know your opinions? He said, he started counting and he said, maybe five or six people I've told my opinions to. So that's the incredible tragedy. You have a Palestinian who wants to have peace with Israel, who knows that Israelis really just want to be good neighbors. And, and he can only tell five people his opinions because he's afraid if he tells others, they're going to tell the Palestinian Authority secret police and he's going to end up being tortured in jail. That's the tragedy of the situation. I have sort of a comment uh, from the internet. Uh... Isn't it so that every uh, area of the world that has been uh, Muslim uh, it should always be Muslim? Uh, that means, for instance, Spain should again be Islam Islamic country. Uh, is that uh, part of, of their idea still alive or is it just Israel? That's the problem. That idea is still alive in the Palestinian Authority. It's alive more amongst Hamas. We hear that uh, very often among Hamas officials. Uh, we actually heard it just um, just last week uh, in a speech in the Al-Aqsa Mosque, not from a Hamas official, from a, from a regular sermon in the Al-Aqsa Mosque that was put on the internet uh, after it was expressed there. The Palestinian Authority has also expressed this idea uh, but not as often. And I'll explain to you why this is. I mentioned to you earlier that according to Islam, land that is holy waqf is not allowed to remain in the hands of the infidels and the non-Muslims. The non well, according to Islam, any land that was once ruled by Muslims uh, then becomes waqf. And therefore, if if Christians, like let's say Spain, is now ruled by, by Christian government, Spain also is waqf, and Spain also has to return to Islam under Islamic law. So any country that was once under the Ottoman Empire or anywhere else, or like I say, under uh, un under anything in Islam, and that is part of, that is part. Now, the Palestinian Authority, I think for, uh, we've publicized some of their speeches years ago when they said this, and I think they got into trouble with their donor countries. So the Palestinian Authority doesn't mention it that much. Hamas who doesn't have to worry about donor countries because the countries that are giving to them, uh, like the, the Gulf countries, the extremists, Iran, uh, they feel the same way. So they still mention it. But definitely it's true. It's part of Islamic belief. Tell us a little bit about your organization. Um, with the material you've shown us, I guess you will have a lot of people who have to monitor television, uh, sports events, everything, 24-7. Uh, uh, how many are you? <laughs> and tell us about your organization. OK, it's a great question. We have, we have 10 uh, Arabic language uh, experts, uh, some of whom were born in Arab countries, others who just uh, grew up, parents speaking Arabic in Israel, uh, others who, uh, who just learned Arabic. A number of them also have gone through Israeli army intelligence. And uh, like you said, it's very true. They, we, we follow all the official Palestinian Authority television. They have a couple of stations. Fatah has a station as well. Uh, then we also follow all of the social media of, of all of the Palestinian Authority leaders, literally. follow. We, there are 20 or 30 different individuals who we follow on social media. These are the people who determine Palestinian 
um, the future of the Palestinian population by, by setting the agenda for the Palestinian Authority, uh, the leaders of the PA. So we follow their social media, we follow their Twitter, uh, we follow their school books. So, so it, it's literally, it's a major, major undertaking, but because we, we, we cover all of their sources of, me of messaging, we really, really know where the Palestinian Authority is leading its people. By the way, this recent terror wave that we've had that's murdered 19 people, and we've had many, many more terror attacks that even that did not succeed. We've had probably, I don't know, I don't know if the number is 50 or, or closer to 100 in the last two months. Palestinian Media Watch warned about this more than a month before it started. We wrote about it. We wrote about it again. We listed all the examples. We said the Palestinian Authority is looking for violence, looking for terror. We literally warned about it. So by watching all the different ways the Palestinian Authority can message its people, we literally know what the Palestinian Authority is about to do. Do you, do you, do you uh, record every, um, so you keep these um, messages from television, et cetera? Do you, do you have them kept? Uh, absolutely. <clears throat> we have we have all of Palestinian television uh, since the 19, literally uh, 1997 or so, uh, when we started recording, 1998, we started recording around that time. And we have all of the original recordings uh, stored away. And today, of course, then we were doing it, of course, on, on VHS recording tape. Today, we, of course, do it all. Uh, and we have backups, uh, double backups of everything. We have some of it in the office, some of it out of the office. Um, we're completely covered, and it's a it's a wealth of material for anyone who's ever wants to study what really really happened and and why what was supposed to be an Oslo peace process turned into an Oslo terror process. Uh, all they have to do is look at the messages the PA gave their people, uh, and we were warning about this literally in the first years already. We were warning that this was not the way a leadership talks to its people if they're interested in peace. We knew it was a fraud right from the beginning. Unfortunately, Israelis didn't wake up until they started their uh, their major, major terror wave uh, intifada, uh, which of course ended up going for four years uh, with 1,200 killed. But for, to us, it was obvious literally after a few months. I'll go back to the question about who listens. Uh, you have a lot of First of all, you have 20% of the uh, population of Israel. They are Arabic. They probably hear this uh, because I guess they watch Palestinian television. How do they react? What do they hear? And how uh, does the, the Jewish, the Israeli Jews uh, react? Because many of them also, I guess, have studied Arabic and speak Arabic and could f don't need you to tell them they could find out by themselves so how do people listen in israel okay so so people uh in israel first of all a lot of the arab population they, they, you can't get this on regular uh israeli television israeli television the channels that the average israeli can, can get does not include palestinian tv uh so for an israeli to get it like we do in our office we had to put special antennas on the roof, and we do. We have two special antennas. One is Nile sat, one is Arab sat. We get hundreds of, of Arabic language stations across, across the Middle East. So that's the first thing. Um, so the average Israeli will not be able to get this. Isra um, Israeli Arabs, in addition to Israeli television, which they like to have because it's good quality television and good movies, a lot of Israeli Arabs also have purchased this antenna and they put it on the roof. And a lot of them, they watch Al Jazeera, they watch PA TV, they can watch Hamas. Um, now, are they listening? I think they're definitely listening. Uh, I don't know what percentage are listening. All I know is that in recent years, uh, the worst case of course was last year, but we see it now as well. Just a year ago now in May, uh, starting in May, the, 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 for the first time in many, many years, the Arabs living in Israeli cities, uh, the numbers they say now are about 15,000 of them went out rioting, burning, uh, hundreds, hundreds of Israeli Jewish homes were burned to the ground. I think close to 700 or so cars were burned. Um, a lot of people had, had bullets shot into their, in the, and these are from their neighbors. One woman described how her neighbor was downstairs showing the Arab mob in the street, pointing to her window 
and she was in her house alone with her children as their neighbor was busy pointing. And fortunately, the police arrived at that moment um, and, and stopped them. Um, a number of Israelis were lynched and murdered. Uh, I think uh, 15 or 20 synagogues were burned to the ground. Uh, it was horrific. These were pogroms all across Israel, done by Israeli Arabs by their neighbors. And why did this happen? It's because the Palestinian Authority has been giving the message since we started following the PA, uh, over 20 years. We've been giving the message that all of you are Palestinians. You're not Israelis. They've said expressions like there's a contradiction between being a Palestinian and Israeli. Um, you, and, and in fact, the Israeli Arab Knesset members today don't define themselves as Israelis. They define themselves as Palestinians with Israeli citizenship. Uh, many of them rec don't recognize Israel's right to exist. They openly talk about wanting to have Israel turn into a, a state. They call it a state for all of its residents as opposed to a Jewish state. So Israel has big problems now with its local Arab population. And I believe it is a direct result of these messages by the PA that they've been giving not just to their people, they've been giving them to Israeli Arabs as well. Okay, I'll ask again, questions? No, okay. This one, what, what hope do you have? So the hope that I have is when I, I meet people like whose name we call him Ali, even though that's not his real name, um, because he he really he knows a lot of Palestinians um, who he he thinks are very very frustrated with the leadership. What we're actually trying to do now is create a platform for them, a website for them, Facebook page for them, where they can all express their opinions uh, privately. Uh, that is not privately, publicly with in private because they'll have their faces. We'll, we'll help create the recordings. They'll have their faces hidden, their, their voices hidden. Um, uh, and we're hoping to get enough opposition to the PA all by Palestinians and other Muslims from around the world uh, because of, especially because of their abuse of their children, uh, poisoning the minds of their children. So it's, it's a project. I don't believe there'll be a change in the Palestinian Authority that comes from the top down. The entire, entire leadership is rotten. We, we listen to all of them. Like I said, we follow them all. There was no one, no one talking about Israel having a right to exist. Uh, and no one is saying anything decent about Israel or the Jews as neighbors, even though we have been the best friends for them over the years. It is all just a libelous world in order to create hatred. So the only change will come from the bottom up and we're hoping that maybe we can generate and, and, and the, these people put them all together, create some kind of a, a grassroots movement that can replace the leadership. It happened in some other countries where they told that the Arab Spring, I'd love to see a Palestinian Spring where they literally get rid of their leaders uh, and come to Israel as good as, as, as neighbors and say, okay, now that we've gotten rid of our leadership, uh, let's live together with you uh, in peace. So that's the only hope I see. Okay, thank you. Well, since there aren't any more questions, uh, we'll uh, let you off, I guess. I, I would say, Itamar, we would love to have you in Sweden, and um, we're going to delay your, uh, or give your message on to others. Uh, first of all, putting it out on our internet, of course, but then we spoke, sp speak to the other Sweden-Israel uh, friendship associations all over Sweden and try to arrange some things. So, Hope to see you in Sweden soon. Thank you for this night. Very interesting. Um, well, I thank you, but I also have a friend of yours who wants to say a few words to you, Itamar. Itamar, I just would like to say thank you to you that you have been um, so courage all those years. I mean, I don't know how many years I know you, but you've been to Parliament and you have really tried and you have the have have had the same message all the time. And now you have convinced the Norwegian parliament, and I'm sure you can manage with the Swedish as well. So continue and don't give up. Thank you for who you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you again. See you again. Bye-bye.